here folks. Necromancy is a topic that doesn't seem to have gotten much coverage here on YouTube, so I thought I would do a video about it. For those of you who do not know what necromancy is, it is a magical practice that involves connecting with the dead, often for the purpose of divination. This is a custom that spans various cultures and has a history that goes back thousands of years in one form or another. It is a practice that is certainly akin to those of shamanistic cultures who would hold rituals to commune with their ancestors for advice, blessing, and protection. Necromancy was and is largely still considered a part of the black arts in Western culture. There is plenty of lore to suggest that it is one of the most taboo things that a witch or a sorcerer could have done in the eyes of the church in the medieval and renaissance periods. Today, necromancy plays a key role in religions such as Santeria and Haitian voodoo, and often is practiced by pagans and modern sorcerers and witches. New Agey folks also dabble in it in the forms of seances and channeling. A part of my own magical and religious practice is honoring and working with my own ancestors. I do so regularly throughout the year and hold a special observance on Samhain, which is a Gaelic holiday that happens around the Mexican Day of the Dead and Halloween. There is one ancestor in particular that aids me in my magic, and I have a part of my working altar set aside for her. I keep what some people call a spirit box, which is used to house her spirit. Other folks use a pot or even a skull for the same purpose. People might place a bone or hair of the person in the spirit house or a photo in personal items. While I have photos of my own ancestor and some of her personal belongings, I have also placed things in the box that she would have associated with in life, such as herbs because she was a herbalist and a midwife. So going that route would probably work just fine for people who do not have access to photos, bones, or belongings of the spirit they wish to house. I make offerings to this particular ancestor on a regular basis. In life, she was quite fond of both whiskey and tea, so those are the usual offerings that I leave her. Of course, every spirit is different, so if you're looking to work with ancestors or another spirit, find out what type of offering would be suitable for them. Instead of using a household shrine, some people prefer to visit places associated with the spirit to leave their offerings and do their workings. This could be a grave site, an old home, a place of birth or death, or anywhere that may be connected to the spirit, including a place that they held dear in life. For the time around Samhain, I erect a shrine dedicated to all my ancestors and other loved ones who have passed. I like to decorate it with their photos, personal belongings, and other items that remind me of them. I also have on a candles, an offering bowl, incense holder, and natural materials associated with the seasons such as pumpkins and fallen leaves. On Samhain, my household has a feast in honor of our ancestors and deceased loved ones. We prepare seasonal food that they would have enjoyed, setting a placement aside for them and toasting to their memory. It is a very simple way to honor them. If holding a feast yourself, it is best to dispose of the food respectfully. We put ours in the compost so it can nourish our soil for the following year. Other folks will leave it outside for the critters to eat. There are people who might hold a feast for their ancestors on birthdays or other holidays such as Christmas or Yule. Some practitioners of traditional witchcraft hold a feast called the Red Meal, with foods such as red meat, red wine, dark bread, apples, and pomegranates. And some pagans, such as heathens, hold ceremonies involving food and drink in honor of both the gods and ancestors to connect with them. Doing magical workings with the dead and other spirits is obviously not for everyone. I think that it is something that should be approached with caution, and above all, absolute respect. You probably should be mindful of others that you live with and what type of forces that you might be exposing them to. Protection is key, of course, and seeking the help of any gods that you might worship, especially those associated with death in the underworld, along with any guardians that you might have, such as a familiar, animal totem, or spirit guide are very good ideas. These are things that you might want to consider doing even when trying to conjure up ancestral spirits unless you are 100% sure that they are safe to conjure up. Even if you knew them in life and had a wonderful relationship with them, there is no guarantee that this will be the case. Some people just do not want to be disturbed, if you know what I mean. 
There are certain items that are fantastic to use to help you in making contact, such as plants, which I did a video series on and I will post a link to that in the sidebar, as well as charms, incense blends, and other things. One of my favorite ingredients to use in ancestral workings is graveyard dirt. This can either be purchased from a reputable and ethical supplier or collected yourself. If you are thinking of collecting your own dirt, please be respectful while doing so. It is best to make sure that the dead are receptive and that the ground is itself. Be sure to leave proper offerings such as coins or find out what other type of offering the land and the deceased would like. Don't just go digging up random dirt off of someone's grave. Remember, these are people's loved ones. Try and get some from a grave of your own ancestors or from the grave of a spirit that you work with. If that is not possible, you could try by an old tree or another communal area of the cemetery. If any of you have something that you would like to share on the topic of necromancy, such as personal experience and practice or historical rituals and spells, please feel free to do so either in the comments, in a video response, or in a private message. Thanks for watching. Slancha.